So which game we are going to see next, the next semi-final? So Sasha is the hand with Vladi as the brain against Wesley and... Aronian, and but Lev. we don't see who we is the yeah, hand and who is the brain. What do you think, which one would fit better in that team? Looks like Wesley is dictating the action <laughs> and Lev is going to be playing. <laughs> I was wondering sometimes, you know, that this uh, this format of chess <coughs> called hand and brain, but I would believe that actually it's two brain and the 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 brain who we call brain, it's it's a uh, brain, but actually the hand is more of a brain than hand. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, it, in a way, in a way, it's kind of trickier to be the hand. It's because hand. Because it's because brain and yeah, brain yeah, versus brain and brain. There will right? be a lot of spots where the the instruction isn't really all that clear. And you have to figure out what uh, what people want from you. Okay, which which part, which role is easier? You think? I think brain is probably easier. Easier. I think because yeah, the I responsibility is on the other one. So the responsibility is shared, but I think there's sort of more thinking involved Knight. when you mm -hmm. when you're uh, when you're playing the, the hand. Was a Sicilian for for a very hot second and is now <laughs> French. It was just meantime. a little bite for us <coughs> that is going to be interesting, right. Sicilian, and this way it's going to be a closed uh, I position. I think that... Uh, <coughs> uh, Knight? It, no, I, uh, something, something has... Yeah, okay, now it's uh, refreshed. Yeah, I was wondering if White actually decided not to play G4 there because it wasn't updating, but... But no, this is these guys are much more serious than you were. <coughs> yeah, there is no, there is no laughing there. Seemingly, no laughing. Yeah. Suddenly, they are very serious. I think, I think the announcement of the prize fund <laughs> may have, uh, may have uh, <coughs> uh, shaken up my confidence in people's wealth. You know, good intentions. Look at I how Vesley is thinking. They have their eye on the prize there. <laughs> but it's funny because you see the faces. Mm. And you can see that they are thinking sharp. How should we, which direction to go? Look, those guys also, how serious they are. I how disapprove. focused they are. I disapprove severely. Uh, this is, this is Maybe they are going to get a penalty because the main yeah, role exactly, was exactly. that everybody should have fun. Yeah. And these guys act Look if it's vacancy. Look at them, it's, dis <laughs> it's, it's, it's disgraceful, <laughs> disgraceful <laughs> behavior. <laughs> Whoa. Pawn. So this was the big question. Yeah, returning, returning to the game for a second. <coughs> uh, yeah. Wow, look at that. D takes C5. It's a commitment. Yeah. Bishop C5, Bishop D3, I think, already played, yeah. Mm. It, makes, it makes sense because White uh, kind of got into a situation. Do you think Kramnik is good in these kind of positions? Kramnik is Knight. good at Every any, position. Any, any kind <laughs> of position, particularly if you ask Kramnik, Knight. of course, but <laughs> also objectively. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, time to exchange the F3 knight. So yeah, the E5 Yeah, Nabi D2 will be played, as we can see on the screen. I'm tempted to say white is a little bit better, but it's probably quite balanced. Um, will G5 appear on the board in this game? At some point. What uh, about this point? Yeah, this <laughs> yeah. I mean... <coughs> I mean, you're sitting no. next to the wrong person yeah. <laughs> not to play this. No, no, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree entirely. And probably this is maybe the last moment when you can do this because you probably are not going to be able to... Uh, in particular, if the trade... Ah, oh, okay, so he goes knight g6, which I think is very, very decent because I think white will struggle to find good work for both of their knights. So leaving only one pair of knights on the board would have made white's development easier. Well, with these positions, it's always a big challenge, mm -hmm. right? Where to put, if you have two knights, right. it can be... <coughs> can I be three, queen, two, knight, be jito? It's not that bad. Yeah. I think the important part, well. another important part about playing knight g6 is that we've, we've taken away the f4 square from the bishop on c1, which uh, might be very useful for, for the future. Yeah, but like the lack of banter is just, uh, is, is making me very, very uh, fearful for the future of humanity. <laughs> like, there hasn't been a single <laughs> word exchanged. They've been playing for three minutes. What is this? Disqualify them all. Put, them, put, <laughs> put us. Uh, this put way us you in get the into the final. Put us in the final, yeah. <laughs> well, nowadays there are all kinds of way to get into the <laughs> exactly, final, right? Yeah. And this is and this is clearly <laughs> ours. Yeah. Here is the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Knight b3, bishop b6, rook e1. Very typical play, right? Mm -hmm. In these kind of situations. And it seems like queen, queen b8 was chosen. Yeah, queen b8, queen e2. King. And finally, interesting that he goes queen b8. I guess he wants to preserve the, the option of playing bishop c7. Bishop c7, right? To, to really put all the pressure from mm -hmm. all sides. And I think he said king. And uh, uh, yeah, we can't really see that part of the board from this view angle. But yeah, you, and you would castle assume is on the yeah, board. You would assume they would castle, yeah. Time-wise, look at that. Yeah. They are very similar. Mm -hmm. Just a few seconds uh, difference. 
very balanced game, I must say. Yeah, no, I mean, just, yeah, like, completely breaking the spirit of the event. Yeah, like <laughs> making actual good, good chess moves. <laughs> like, what is this? Look at, look, look at Christiuk. Look at Christiuk, <laughs> really. <laughs> What's the question? Finally, there is some. Ah, Rook. Yeah, well, he said bishop, and he's, ah, asking, bishop. <laughs> and he's asking if, if, if Vlad wants bishop to <laughs> the yeah. Ah, okay. <coughs> yeah, I think the problem is maybe after bishop's. No. no I thought bishop, I thought bishop seven, seven knight d5 right? might work, but knight takes e5 works, right? I think maybe this is why he wasn't bishop so. Bishop c5. I think after knight b5, he wants to go back to d8, maybe. And we can take only five, can't we? Knight but g bishop g6. Maybe? Ah, with the knight, sorry. With the knight, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. This is what I was. Well, with the knight, I don't know if or the other one Bishop, you want because yeah. of this, right? Oh, yeah, we might get mated, yeah. I don't know. It's just the first thing I have to yeah, check. Always, I'm not yeah. sure it works at all, yeah. but maybe it's simpler simply to go maybe with the C, other yeah, knight, maybe. right? C, but then we don't have knight takes f3 checks. So I have to calculate again, yeah. yeah. Oh, we have bishop takes h2, knight. though. Knight, yeah, okay. He said knight, and now uh, Lev will actually calculate knight b5 for a bit, but I assume he'll take on c6. Well, actually, there is not much of an option if it's <coughs> knight. Yeah, there's I mean, no other option, C6. right? Yeah, yeah but knight c6, you don't really want to do that. I'm not sure. I think this is very playable. We can just go h4 here. H4? Yeah, just go h4. I mean, f6. So, I don't the know. question F6. is f6, but... Yeah. Knight c6 on the board. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought that will be practical. Well. Yeah, and he goes h4. And it's right there. You, yeah. you know these guys so well. And the position. Well, it's, yeah, it, it <laughs> makes sense. I think it like entirely depends on how strong <laughs> f6 is, because if we don't play f6 here as black, I think we actually legitimately get mated quite quickly. h5, h6. But I'm not sure. They have good nerves. Uh, what about, oops, what oh. about playing c pawn? Yeah, he'll f6 play, he'll of play f6. Of course, he'll play f6. f6. Yeah. F6 is on and, the board. And now it becomes interesting because you can take on g6 and pretend you have the structure under control, like bishop g6 take, put, put the bishop on f4 and pretend you have this grip on the, the central structure. But black uh, is also, I'm guessing, not that unhappy after something like c6, c5 here. He gets a it's a very interesting position, in by interesting the way. Very position, huge yeah. tension in the center. Yeah. Or we can go e takes f6 in the current position and try to prove that we have something Bishop. here somehow. Oh. Yeah, Bishop. But yeah, but yeah, he's gone for the more solid option. The Wesley way. The Wesley way, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now the question is, can we burn a tempo to prevent c5 somehow? Oh, but I don't okay. think we can, right? Like before doesn't really look right. I think I would like to play both before and bishop before in one move if I if I could. But I think in many many times when it's French, if you mm. play two moves, yeah, just game right. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, but bishop before is, is very more positional, solid, yeah. guys. Look at that. They just want to and control. I assume, I assume c5 oh. is coming. Yeah. Bon. <coughs> Obviously not f takes e5, but no. Kramnik Maybe has a5, in mind. but I think c5 is more logical. Yeah. It's I think the choice is strictly between c5 and a5 if you if you're being told pawn in this position. And c5 mm. is on the board. Yeah. And it's interesting that the players are quiet, so the audience is also kind of scared that they cannot talk. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly everybody became very serious. Bishop, so bishop g3 probably. Yeah, securing sort of the uh, bishop, also maybe trying to exactly, exchange yeah. in the next hinting, one. Hinting that you have to calculate the f6 everywhere, yeah. You're not maybe threatening it yet, but you're definitely kind of reminding black that this might happen. Also, I guess maybe queen d3 is a bit of an awkward move to... Trying to provoke to uh, f5. Trying to provoke a 5 or bishop b8 or some kind of a, a other awkward uh, response. Well, but first after bishop g3, black has to come up with some reply. I'm not sure Kramnik is very happy with the mm. position. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure he is, yeah. He is the I time balance is very similar, only mm. half a minute, so they are keeping that in mind. Mm. Do you think it's a good uh, way of splitting hand and brain in uh, Kramnik's case with Grischuk? So when they go down under a minute, Grischuk will take over. I think that's probably Right, judging on form in this tournament, maybe because Vladi, I think, even lost a couple of games on time here. He's uh, not been like the other tournament. Yeah, what in, you're the playing. in the in the yes. other tournament, yeah. Well, I also think that in Grischuk case, I mean, he is the most famous in the chess world by far, going down oh. in time, mm -hmm. not in such a time control, but in classical time control as well, and playing at least as good mm. as if he would have time, right? Yeah. So for me, it was kind of a very logical uh, approach. So uh, 
porn was suggested and yeah, I was, was <laughs> But I saw the face expression of Grace Chuk and he was kind of guess. surprised. Did I see well, you think? Yeah, he was uh, He was a bit, I think, uh, Intended maybe Queen B5 or something queen else? Queen C2 is still annoying. And yeah. also, even Queen takes B5 takes and the F6, and the F6 was six. quite annoying, yeah. I thought, yeah. Just briefly, if we no, we don't, we, the things are moving on, yeah. I think uh, Queen C2 was probably the choice, yeah, Wesley mm -hmm. and Levon combining with the same idea, but not letting the pawn on B2 <coughs> out of their sight. And now kind Can of an Black uncomfortable decision for, for Black. You have Can to I choose. go King F7? What do you think? With a crazy idea. Mm. Sorry. I'm very worried about H5 and then E. Uh, it might not work, but H7 I'm very worried right? about yeah, well, something landing on H7. EF, Bishop G3, even just FG. And then no, I had in mind generally to capture Yeah, back, but this is but why I included H5 so yes, early. Yeah, yeah because you see things ahead. Yeah. Bishop, Quite a bishop bit. was called, and now you have to play Bishop B8. So well, there's no other. Why, why not <laughs> lower? Such a panic. Yeah. Such a panic, said Vladi. <laughs> yeah, Vladi is p p g p p criticizing the amount of time. But I guess because Sasha doesn't like EF6, and he's trying to figure out uh, what he's going to do if EF6 happens. Because just EF, Bishop G3, FG. And the six is hanging. No, I'm guessing game. Guess the four. <laughs> <laughs> guessing game. Four guesser. Yeah. No. Yeah. Should be Let's three of G, the and uh, you have to. Yeah, it's a problem that three. black cannot capture with it's the pawn a because the e six <laughs> pawn is under attack. But here just probably F G. Right? F G rook of three. Yeah. F G will have just been winning, but yeah. rook of three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, so after takes, I think takes, pawn was called and it hasn't takes. been played in the yeah. arm. Yes, yeah. because maybe he's not sure. Mm -hmm. He thinks that maybe he can just play, I don't know, well. no, <laughs> H5 or what, yeah. what else to consider? <laughs> I don't know, yeah, I don't know. Level he's actually serious. gone B3 here, yeah, he just decided, declined all of that. But this is a surprising decision, right? Yeah, it is. Because I wonder is, like, what Wesley will say yeah. he had in mind, but probably F. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. No? Mm -hmm. Or C4. That's also possible. Uh, Maybe. Rook A6 is something that I'm very attracted to. Just to further nice. support I always the love these moves which mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. show the power of the rook. And I, I, I want to be able to reply to EF with GF. Bishop, <laughs> bishop, bishop, bishop. 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 Vladimir <laughs> loves bishops, let's face it. Yeah, well... Uh, I, I don't know if he... Ah, so maybe this is a draw for if, let's say, <laughs> it will be takes, takes, and rook e6, for example. Mm. No, we right? have given fg now. Ah, now we FG have actually given problem. white the option of Ooh. fg. But maybe if we can go... Ah, yeah, yeah, this is your draw offer, yeah? Bishop f7 now. Well, bishop f7 takes and rook e6, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oops, sorry about that. Let's well, see, where f7, is Bishop f7, we take on f6. Let's say black takes with a pawn, and yeah. we just go rook e6. Yeah. And it looks very pretty, but it's just a perpetual there. I don't think there is any follow-up that is more than a perpetual here. A silent kind of draw mm. but this will be not the case. No, no, no. Queen no, 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 no. Queen White has play, completely yeah. different ideas in this position. Yeah. You don't get such a beautiful positional advantage. Yeah. White still needs to figure out a way to make progress. Queen d2 is a kind of a clever move, because I think he wants to be able to meet a4 with b4. So that the queen side remains. <coughs> but okay, basically, this is what black has to look after, mm -hmm. right? And they are go down in time, so it's uh, under two and a half minutes, <laughs> both teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the Jan in the background says king and then bishop, obviously indicating king h7 <laughs> followed by bishop g8 to really. Oh, kind of okay, but maybe king h8 is better, bishop g8, bishop h7 yeah, also, yeah. Oh, to leave the space that, for the But unfortunately, Sasha did not read that intention, so he played king h7, yeah. Okay. Played king h7. Yeah, and the question for white is how do you make progress? It's a very beautiful position to look at, but you still have to find a way yeah, to... Yeah, it's interesting <coughs> that basically EF, GF, and black is kind of completely surviving mm -hmm. and was upon uh, yeah, center, if right? If, if, it, if black gets to play e5, it's just such a change in... in queen e3. Mm -hmm, Extremely queen e3. positional. Yeah. Not really committing to anything just uh, yet. Maybe you want knight h2, knight g4, but... Wow. Maybe so in positional. Some, in some oh, in the end, there we there we have it. Yeah, knight h2. We we but might even be game. threatening <laughs> EF GF knight g4. So very Black instructive game. Yeah. yeah, you want EF and knight g4 and have something and yeah, on yeah, h6, yeah. right? Oh, so pinpoint the drawback of the yeah. king on and, uh, h7. Black is finally committing. Action time. Contemplate. <coughs> um, takes takes. 
Queen d2 back, interesting. I was looking at some other squares. I thought queen f3 was maybe not that stupid, but I, I like the queen on this diagonal. I'm not going to criticize. So the question is if this d4 will be a real pass pawn or a weak one? Rather, uh, yeah, it's probably. So rook d8 can Rook d8, go queen b4 as well, yeah. Th this is why I was also wondering. Queen b4, why. look at that. Great yeah. come to play suddenly. Why we've chosen this square because. On f3, it would have been quite difficult to attack that queen. And on d2, we continue giving black. But white went down to 1 yeah. minute and 30 seconds. Oh, okay, so we we will get to to actual blitz pretty soon, yeah? Because if they go down to below in a minute, yeah. the brains switch off and the hands take over. Yes. <laughs> Still <coughs> quite annoying for black, right? We well, it's uh, not so easy, yeah. I mean, now also h5 is uh, in the air. Mm -hmm. At the same time, at least the queen is off from mm -hmm. this diagonal, so after knight g4, there's no tactical mating threat. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that bishop on f7, it does a very decent defensive job, but it's just Pawn. such a such a horrid, horrid Pawn. piece. Yeah. What does that Pawn, supposed yeah. to mean? Is it I a4? I guess a4, yeah. I guess he doesn't believe he's getting mated, but it looks like he might be. I don't know. Well, it's kind of Vladimir's yeah. optimism. Yeah, f5, yeah, finally <laughs> played f5. Time goes up f5, back on look at that. And after knight f3, what he has in mind? The pawn is under attack, knight g5 will show up. I guess ev everything looked bad, so he... Okay, so... Bishop d8. Just giving up on d4 so that the knight doesn't land on g5. That's uh, very uncomfortable. Bishop g f4, what the... Lever is, Lev is such a It just such wants to go bishop g5. Are we down to... Oh, yeah, okay. He's below... Looks like he might be below a minute. Just yes, now it's Aranyan finishing the game against Grishchuk. The hands take over. Yeah. Yeah, white is obviously much better, but the uh, game isn't over yet. If the bishop on f7... Some if you imagine the same position the bishop that is currently on f7 is on d5, black is just instantly completely yeah. fine. Even if yeah, that's a different game yeah, called even Dama, if, right? Say, yeah, <laughs> even if and you jump over. Yeah. <laughs> But what I mean is, even let's say if the pawn on d4 is dead by that point, you still kind of feel that black has enough. I like rook a3 though, trying to provoke knight takes d4 and then play bishop b6. This is still this is still not yeah, so easy for white. After taking the b4, bishop b6, mm -hmm. it can get some activity. Yeah, and left declines actually. Left says no, I have to protect my stuff for a bit longer. Rook b1, king g8. Rook ec1, yeah, that is a, a, a good file for your rooks, so it makes perfect sense. To but actually it shows very much the style of Aronian, mm -hmm. right? That, like, uh, grinding the Grinding opponent. and also really, I think not only he, but many strong players have this real taste for not allowing any counterplay they can help. Yeah, it. it's very painful for yeah, the yeah, other yeah. side. Yeah, because you, you want well, to you were never someone who wanted to be passive. I mean, just to start with your Grimfeld yeah, uh, yeah, activity uh, is is like I, I a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, I built my repertoire and uh, around my, my, that whole, my whole approach. chess style around trying not to have passive positions. I, I have not always succeeded, but it was definitely a conscious decision I, I took quite early on. It's interesting what you're saying, that is it possible to take conscious decision on your style? To a degree. You, you, you can't guarantee results, which is exactly what, what, I'm, what I mean. Like you, you, you can't really uh, ensure that you will never have to play positions you really hate, but uh, you can try to you know, develop a repertoire which will minimize those, mm -hmm. uh, those positions. And uh, it was easy for me because like, I, I was a huge Kasparov fan when I was a kid. And, <laughs> and, and building as much of my repertoire on, on his repertoire gave me sort of both the best of both worlds you know i was following yeah. somebody i really admired and also his style suited what i thought were my strength pretty well so. now the players are under 20 seconds so it's going to be a big fight and mm -hmm. uh, you can see yeah we should kramnik yeah. is also looking yeah we can we save it look nervous <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah, Bishop black is struggling is but going oh, no, hang on, e5 is hanging. takes no, takes right sti you still have to um, wow, it's getting extremely fast for us. Yeah, too. the board the board seems to struggle to catch up to what they're doing. But ah, so yeah, he, he B5 pass pawn yeah, is the power. Is still, uh, is still yeah, this is passive, not something yeah. uh, black can be proud of. Yeah. And Rookie we hear the I big guess. noise hitting the clock. Yeah, but isn't B6 just winning now? Is my pr my problem with this is that yeah you have to play. Yes, but then even Rook C8, it's it even a queen now. It's not it's not even an exchange. It's just a queen. <laughs> And seems like, oh, yeah, and Vlad, game over. Vlad appears to be quite unhappy with some of the decisions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 
Well, this is shows also that, I mean, professionals, no matter how much it's about fun, we always come up yeah. with, the, with a better solution and what went wrong and why did you do this, why not the other one, what you had in mind, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah. always well, like they that. Will know. And of course, I mean, uh, there was much less of that discrimination as when we finished our game, but we were clearly taking it a much less, you know, serious way than, than, than these four guys. And they played an actual serious game of chess, so clearly they have strong opinions about it, and you can see, you can see them now discussing. Uh, yeah, discussing because, I mean, at some point it was very interesting, right, when uh, strategically this happened after uh, BTXC's, mm -hmm. uh, very much in the opening, right? Yeah. This structure was very interesting, and the tension was there all the time, whether can Black make some activity, mm -hmm. or can black avoid e takes f6 having a disadvantage? And this is, around this we had yeah. the big battle. Yeah. And, uh, eventually, if you actually succeed in provoking f6, f5, which ended up happening, then black will suffer. And maybe he, they had some chances to save the end game that they got, but it's, uh, it's quite unclear. I think but a very nicely played game by Wesley yeah, and Lev. Yeah, actually they mm -hmm. are a very strong pair mm -hmm. from this point of view. And you can see that the players are really analyzing deeply on uh, on the game what went wrong positionally i'm sure vladimir has very strong opinion oh yeah. of course oh yeah. he's uh, one of the greatest positional player in uh, time and we can see the analysis yeah they're, the, they're debating i guess this is the point where sasha panicked and played a five and he yeah and they're discussing whether it could have been held by allowing the knight to g4 and yeah clearly maybe the only move is bishop g8 <laughs> yeah they're <laughs> actually suggesting to play bishop g8 which cannot be a queen e7 and then yeah something like this uh, yeah but i think also that these kind of things vladimir would be scared he's going mostly in position away because maybe he doesn't mm. like when they attack what do you think about that how many of the top players can handle and was not extremely panicking when uh, someone attacked their king. Because, for example, with Gary, once I had extremely straight strategy for me when I played in Linares and it was successful, that I knew that he's just hating if somebody's attacking mm. him. It cost me two pieces <laughs> <laughs> to keep my strategy, I have to say. <laughs> but I know that he was sweating, and yeah. actually I made the draw. Mm -hmm. What do you think, like, what about you? Were you worried, or you were just okay I to handle when they were attacking I never really enjoyed it it didn't like i don't think uh i like dropped sort of two degrees of strength when under attack but i i was always searching for ways to kind of fight for like for me sacrificing material was much more comfortable throughout my career rather than taking material so uh yeah like you have to go back to maybe historic examples like i don't know victor is maybe the, you know, the one person that I think will be very high on anybody's list when that we you're talking about somebody who was pretty comfortable being under pressure, being under attack. You mean Victor Korchno? Korchno, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, he was, I think, pretty much from the very early stages of his career, he was very okay. Uh, Do you think is there any, can you name any player who is actually playing even stronger when he's under pressure? I don't know, Vishy maybe, but Vishy also didn't really like being... I mean, I just think that Vishy is a fantastic defender. But from my personal experience, yeah, when I, when I got good positions against him, when I got initiatives against him in my, in my career, he didn't... Like, he played very well, but he didn't like it. <laughs> it was very clear he didn't like it. He still defended fantastically. It didn't really impact his, you know, execution of his mm -hmm. skills. But, yeah, he would, wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah, this is uh, what uh, I feel and I experience. And when I talk to youngsters, I tell them that you can look the top players, the top 10, 20, maybe 30, that when there is a choice to go and try to defend passively or sacrifice a pawn with initiative, it's like 99%. Yeah. Do you agree on this? Uh, yeah, I think the split will be tremendously in favor of uh, of any kind of activity. But is it psychological or this is how chess has to be played? I think a little bit of both. I think we're actually moving towards understanding that um, material balance is not everything and you can see it in all in all areas of chess because like in even in opening theory you now see variations which like people would play, let's say, 20 years ago, but everybody would nod and, and say, yeah, this is a complete gamble. There is no way this is any good. You're just doing it because you trust your ability to navigate very messy positions. 
And now you analyze it with strong engines and they just say, yeah, you're okay here. I actually, I just wanted to ask and go further on this and it's good that you brought up the engines because uh, with Alpha Zero, mm -hmm. I think that was the first time when it became extremely clear that it had this idea, what all top grandmasters mm -hmm. have. Yeah. That just sacrificing a pawn, it doesn't mean that I'm very generous. It means that I like initiative, mm -hmm. and maybe not in the five moves. Yeah, yeah. Immediately very we'll long see. term, very long term. Yeah, but actually humans don't make on such a long term the sacrifices, I believe. Yeah. How much do you think, because I felt that actually there was a Norway chess, just the next Norway chess after Alpha Zero came out and the book, and I felt that Magnus specifically got inspired by Alpha Zero. Do you have the same take, or do you think I Top think Grandmaster got inspired by? Yeah, uh, I, 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 I wouldn't, you know, specifically point out Magnus as an example, but I think everybody got very impressed by, like that, in particular, that batch of games that everybody was talking about, those Queens Indians, where it would just play for like tens, tens of moves not really even threatening anything at first and continuing just to build up pressure and completely ignoring the fact that it was down a bunch of material very often, like not even a pawn, but like more than a pawn very often. Uh, I think it impressed everybody, I don't know. I think Magnus, uh, once again, I don't know how true that is, but I had a very definite feeling then that in preparation for his match against Fabi, he felt that in particular compared to what Sergei was doing against him in New York, it will be a much more open, a much more tactically mm -hmm. Im Im impacted uh, match. And he made a conscious effort to sort of, in the year preceding their match, he made a conscious effort to play sharper openings, to play sharper lines in general, to kind of force himself to play messy tactical positions because mm -hmm. Not because he was bad at them, he was never bad at them. He is not really bad at any aspect of chess, but I think his natural inclination is to control. He doesn't really like being out of control. And that informed his opening choices, that informed his stylistic choices. And then I think r around like 2017, 2018, he suddenly started playing like open Nidorfs with white and playing like he played bishop g5 randomly. So is, is uh, Magnus, you think, extremely good in putting himself out of control in order to improve his chess? That was my impression. I, I never really asked him about it. I don't know if it was a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm talking out of my, uh, you know, uh, but there was... But it's a very interesting yeah. thought, I think. Yeah, that, that was, that was uh, definitely the impression I got that at some point he like, he flicked the switch and and chose a whole other way of approaching tournament games and maybe wasn't e even as successful for a bit as, uh, as he was until then because I think uh, in, in positions where things are under control, his edge over the field maybe is bigger. But it, it made him maybe a more complete player and that's always an investment that even for somebody who is as obviously good as Magnus, even for him I think that was an investment very much worth making. But once again, I never had this conversation But do you have the feeling so that he's doing something like this because he needs to do to keep his number one spot or because he's so interested at the time defending his title and he has to do it in order to keep his number one and world championship spot? I think he just Generally, I think the idea of becoming a better chess player kind of interests him. <laughs> so I, I, I suspect he maybe would have been doing it regardless of who he was playing, but uh, it seemed to, to coincide with Fabi qualifying for, for the match. So mm -hmm. in my mind, those things were at least somewhat connected, but I don't know. Okay, well, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to annotate with you, commentate with you. It's always a pleasure and also it's to get your thoughts. Gr always great seeing you. Thanks and, uh, very yeah, much. And enjoyed this. Uh, but uh, there will be, I, I think, more guests coming in at some point. Yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll vacate the premises and go, go watch. And <laughs>